As you know, each party uh, will have 15 minutes to present oral argument. The appellate will proceed first and may present up to five minutes for a rebuttal. Uh, if you wish to reserve any time for rebuttal, please let me know. Uh, I am keeping time on a new device, and so that bear with us. So we've read the briefs. We're ready to proceed with the law. Thank you, Anna. Uh, it'd be possible to uh, reserve five minutes, so yes. that would be ten and five then, right? Yes. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning. My name is uh, Jerry Pisa. I represent Michael Martinez. And uh, may it please the court, Attorney Corkin. The, uh, <clears throat> by way of background in this uh, case, the parties were married for about 15 years. They had three children, one of whom is an adult, and they had uh, two boys who are 15 and 16. They are protected parties in the DDCPO, uh, which we have appealed. The parties were divorced in 2008. Um, that is the same year that Jennifer Martinez obtained a uh, DVCPO against Mr. Martinez. It is uh, our position that Jennifer Martinez uh, requested the DVCPO as part of the divorce process. She had attorney advice. She filed the attorney's advice and then later apologized to Mr. Martinez for having filed that. Uh, she dismissed the DVCPO uh, after about four months of it being in existence. Through the divorce, which occurred in Delaware County, uh, the parties had a shared parenting plan. And at the time of the DVCPO, uh, the primary uh, parent was Jennifer Martinez, who lives in Wadsworth, Ohio. And Mr. Martinez had parenting time of his two boys, which consisted of alternating weekends and every Monday. <clears throat> there were conflicts regarding visitation, and uh, that was apparent throughout the testimony. As a matter of fact, Mr. Martinez had filed approximately seven contempt filings, which had not been heard at the time of the DVCPO. He was still waiting for some resolution to those uh, those contempt filings. The contempt filings related to some monetary issues, uh, but primarily related to uh, parenting time issues, where he had alleged that Jennifer Martinez had denied him visitation. Uh, the record is clear based upon those contempt filings that uh, Mr. Martinez had requested a legal resolution or a legal solution to the contempt uh, uh, issues and also to the parenting time conflicts. In December of 2014, the 15 and 16 year old boys uh, assaulted Mr. Martinez and um, as a result they were charged with domestic violence. They pled down to aggravated assault. They were put on probation for 86 days um, so they would serve 86 days in the juvenile detention center if there was a violation of the court order. What was the charge um, for which they were adjudicated? Uh, aggravated assault. The juvenile court also issued a uh, parenting time order. The parenting time order uh, stated that the um, visitation would be conducted or should be conducted in public places, that there should be a driver other than Mr. Martinez driving his children, that the location of the parenting time would be in Medina County or a connected county or Stark County. The protection um, of Mr. Martinez was the reason for this juvenile court order. Uh, Mr. Martinez was the victim. He was not the perpetrator, although we'll see that it's been argued the other way. The incident that brings us here today um, occurred on May 15, 2015. Uh, it occurred at uh, in, a, in and around
down to McDonald's in Star County, Ohio, which was one of the permitted counties. The uh, trial court made the following findings about the events, but none of these findings identify a present act of domestic violence. The court found um, and stated, the party's conflict surrounding visitations has caused petitioner to be concerned for safety based upon, first thing, a past finding of domestic violence against respondent. This court is aware of many cases that say that a past finding alone is insufficient to sustain a finding of uh, domestic violence or determination of domestic violence. The second finding was that there was a violence incident between the respondent and the minor children, which led to the children being charged in juvenile court and resulted in the respondent's contact with the minors being restricted to visitation in public places. So as to that second finding, it, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's a finding that, of course, is uh, true for the most part, but it ignores the fact that Mr. Martinez was actually the victim, not the perpetrator. He was the victim in that December 14 uh, incident. And that the order, the parenting time order, was for his protection, not for the protection of the children. So it is our position that the trial court's decision in regards to this part makes him a victim for a second time because it's being the, the actions that his children perpetrated against him are being used against him in, in this DVCPO. Uh, the third reason that the court gave was on 5-15-15, the local law enforcement was necessary to assist. Again, we're not arguing that issue, but that issue or that finding ignores the fact that Michael Martinez is the one that called the police. Mrs. Uh, Martinez did not call the police. And that finding also ignores the findings or, or the um, Exhibit A, which consisted of the Stark County uh, Sheriff's Department report, which stated that there were no injuries to the other party, no identification of a domestic violence victim, no offense codes were listed, no charges were filed, no allegations of domestic violence, and that there was merely an allegation of child custody dispute, which was the dispute which led Michael Martinez to call the police. The uh, fourth finding of the court was that response, respondent's actions led petitioner to leave the site with the children and cancel the visit. Well, she did leave the site with the children, she did cancel the visit, but this was within the pattern that had been established. There were many times, uh, according to Mr. Martinez and according to the uh, testimony and the reasons for the contempt motions, that Jennifer Martinez had um, interfered with his parenting time rights. This in and of itself is not domestic violence. And if anything, uh, the blame should be on Jennifer Martinez for again denying Mr. Martinez his parenting time rights. The court appeared to uh, place some significance on the um, video that was taken by your client um, of uh, his former wife, uh, but that video has not been preserved that, for, that is, uh, for this appeal. What are we to, uh, to make of that? That is correct, Your Honor. Um, the parties could testify as to what occurred in the video, and we address that in the brief. Uh, the video, uh, actually what the magistrate said, was that the petitioner presented the most credible testimony substantiated by respondents' video and exhibits. I already discussed um, the exhibit being the Sheriff's uh, Department report that, if anything, um, helps Mr. Martinez's version uh, rather than 
uh, Jennifer Martinez's version. Well, it might it, and it might not in that we, um, the parties, pardon me, testified to what was said and what was done. But we don't have the voice inflections. We don't have the, you know, the volume of uh, speaking that the trial court had before. You know, the, the purpose of pre <coughs> excuse me, uh, presenting the video <coughs> Uh, in the first place, was to um, show what Mr. Martinez's demeanor was. And that was that was the purpose, and his testimony um, described what his demeanor was. Um, in in the brief filed by Jennifer Martinez, um, she left out a very key element of that. We pointed that out in our rep uh, reply brief, where he stated that he never yelled at the boys. That was the purpose of the video is to show that he never yelled at the boys. Not only that, the parties, uh, we cited a case, uh, Your Honor, which uh, states that the uh, parties can testify as to what occurred during the taking of the video or the, or the taping of the video. And uh, that testimony was from Linda Martinez, Michael Martinez's mother, as well as Mr. Martinez. And I, and I believe um, that it's actually verified by Jennifer Martinez that, that she, um, kept reading, she didn't answer, she didn't say anything, she kept her head down, she was flipping through pages. That was the purpose of that whole um, description of the video. And, and I want to inform you that you are now pushing into your five minutes. If you want to continue talking, you may, uh, or if you want to reserve that time, it's up to you. I'll reserve it. Oh, right. Thank you. and may it please the court. I'm Jacqueline Corgan and I represent the appellee in this matter, Jennifer Martinez. And um, I'd like to touch on just a few things that Mr. Pizak mentioned to the court in his presentation before I, I get started with my formal presentation. That is that um, Mr. Pizak mentioned a domestic violence civil protection order that was granted against his client in favor of my client uh, that my client then later dismissed. I just remind the court that it is in the record that that domestic violence civil protection order was issued after a full hearing by a magistrate just as in this civil protection order. So it was issued after a magistrate took evidence and also made the same findings uh, that there was a reason or just cause for a domestic violence civil protection order. Now I'd also like to remind the court that Mr. Martinez's complaints about his visitation and all of his, his uh, motions for contempt are not relevant to the issue before the, the magistrate in issuing this domestic violence civil protection order. Now, your Honors, the, the Medina County Juvenile Court... When you say they're not relevant, uh, I'm not sure what you mean. You mean uh, that when he says there, was a, there has been a pattern of interfering with uh, his parenting time, that's something that uh, neither the trial court nor this court should take into consideration? Well, the, the issue before the magistrate is or was twofold. Was my client afraid of Mr. Martinez. And second, was that fear of hers reasonable? Basically, had Mr. Martinez committed a present act of domestic violence that would justify the issuance of a civil protection order against him in order to prevent further domestic violence in the future? Not whether there was any interference with Mr. Martinez's visitation, not whether there was anything else related to payments or anything else in, concerning the divorce decree from Delaware County. It was simply, did he commit a present act of domestic violence that would justify the issuance of the order that we're here on today? So 
I look at the magistrate's notation that there have been problems or that there have been complaints concerning the visitation as surplusage, Your Honor. And there, the juvenile court in this case did not commit any error. There is absolutely no reason why this court cannot affirm the domestic violence civil protection order in this case and allow it to continue to protect my client, Ms. Martinus. For the, in the first instance, my client did present sufficient evidence to support the issuance of this CPO. And as we have mentioned in the briefs, um, this, is, this is one of those cases where this court on review must look at all the evidence in the light most favorable, not to Mr. Martinus, but to my client, Jennifer Martinus. And the issue is whether a reasonable, whether this court finds that a reasonable trier of fact could indeed find that my client demonstrated by a preponderance of the evidence that she was reasonably in danger of future domestic violence by Mr. Martinus. And it's, it is a little analogous to the sufficiency argument in, in criminal cases such as in Jenks and Tompkins. And in this way, or in, in this case, Your Honors, there were three ways in which my client did show by a preponderance of the evidence that there had been a present act of domestic violence in this case under revised code uh, section 3113.31A1. She only needed to show one of the four options in that statute. Your Honors, as we've said in the brief, she showed potentially three, and if any one of those applied, if this court finds that she that did present a, looking at it in the light most favorable to her, that she did present a preponderance of the evidence under any one of these three, then the civil protection order should be affirmed. The first, of course, is an attempt or an actual commission of bodily injury to my client. And your honors, we, there was an attempt here. What Mr. Pizak didn't discuss was the fact that certainly, you know, police, his client called police in Jackson Township. Police were on the scene at the incident when my client left the, the McDonald's restaurant with her boys in the car. She was followed across Ohio 43 Market Avenue in Jackson Township to a parking lot owned and operated by, by Walsh University. Mr. Martin has followed my client's car into that parking lot. My client testified that he was so close to her car, went with his car, that she was afraid to stop her vehicle or to pull so the Meanwhile, it sounded from the briefs as if all of this happened in the line of sight of the deputy sheriffs who had been called. That's correct. Because so if that's the case, wouldn't we presume that there would have been some citation uh, for a traffic infraction of following too closely. If the officer saw that and saw some criminal activity or some unsafe or threatening behavior when they've been called for uh, the very purpose of a domestic dispute, yet no, no citation. Not necessarily. Um, first of all, because the, the activity occurred on private property, on the property of Walsh University. I think if it had been on a public street, that might have been a little bit different. But it was on, on private property. Also, the activity took place in a very short period of time. Um, it looks from the testimony like there was a, a, a small circuit in the parking lot and then back to McDonald's, Ms., Mrs. Martin has went. Um, whereupon the deputies, or the police officers, I'm sorry, did speak with, with Mr. Martinez and with my client. Um, also, Your Honor, even if, even if a citation had been issued, a citation or lack of citation is not dispositive of the issue of whether there was a present act of domestic violence as found by the magistrate. The magistrate is not bound by the, the decisions or the discretion of an individual police officer. 
She was bound by the testimony that was before her and all the evidence. So, you know, Mr. Martin is following too closely, as we have seen in many, many cases in, in criminal matters, a motor vehicle can, in some instances, be used as a deadly weapon. And indeed, even at a slow speed, a, a, a motor vehicle can be a dangerous object. Um, and, it can, and being followed, even at a slow speed, given the history between the parties, can raise a, a feeling of fear and, and raise a, a threat of physical harm. Um, and as far as an attempt at physical harm itself, I would ask the court to think about what kind of harm can occur even in a rear-end car accident where the speeds are very slow. If, if Mr. Martin's car had struck my client's car, injury to my client, injury to her sons would have been likely and indeed foreseeable. But in addition, um, that car can place an my client and her sons in fear of imminent, physical, imminent serious physical harm and also can result in, in her children being considered abused children under 2151-031 where a substantial risk to the health or safety of a child has, has occurred by violating a duty of care protection or support. If I may, I certainly the fact issue. I'm getting the impression that this was a packed parking lot there was nowhere to go except to have him follow her in this parking lot. I, in my mind, I'm thinking, why didn't she just take off? So, I, I mean, all, all I'm hearing is that he was right behind her, he was right behind her. He's, well, why didn't she just, like, leave? Well, actually, I don't read the record in the same way, Your Honor. I, I don't read that it was a packed parking lot, but that even if it were a packed parking lot, it would still have lanes of travel where, where one could travel you know, up to 10 miles an hour is the usual suggested speed for a parking lot. And uh, following her that closely, if she made a circuit through the parking lot around lanes of other parked cars, she did actually leave. Once she did that and, and saw him tailing right on her bumper, she came back to the, the parking lot of McDonald's because that was where the police officers were motioning her to come. So she did leave. So I, I hope that answers your question, Your Honor. This is your concern. And, and Your Honor, I am not sure what my time, how much time uh, I have left. now at four minutes and 27 seconds. Okay, then, but in addition, addressing my, my opponent's other two assignments of error, the trial court did not lose its way in creating manifest miscarriage of justice when it granted this civil protection order, for, and for basically the same reasons. Because even though this is a somewhat different standard, this isn't the same manifest weight standard that we see in criminal cases. For domestic violence civil protection orders, it is a competent, credible evidence standard overlaying a manifest weight standard. And the trial court judgment won't generally be reversed if it's supported by some competent, credible evidence going to all essential elements of the case. And, Your Honor, we, we have the testimony of my client, and um, even though the testimony of Mr. Martin is conflicts, um, we still do have that testimony. And we also do have the presumption of regularity that does attach to the videotapes that were not introduced or were not we're not introduced as actual exhibits, and we're not preserved for this appeal. One of the things that um, caught my attention uh, that the appellant raised was that when, in the trial court's order, uh, the court references um, the violent the domestic violence incident where the sons were adjudicated on aggravated assault and seemed to blame the father for that. And uh, also, the court decried the uh, involvement of law enforcement at McDonald's, um, but blames the father for that when the it was the father who called for 
law enforcement. Yes, Your Honor. How, how, do, we, um, how do we analyze that in light of the fact that father was not charged in the incident with the son, but rather was, with the sons, but rather was the, uh, the victim? Well, unfortunately, Your Honor, we don't have the testimony before us that had, had proceeded in the, the son's case. No, we know that they were both adjudicated and... Uh... That's correct. They were adjudicated as a result of a plea where they had made a plea agreement to, to plead to lesser charges and my client explained the reasons behind their decision to, to make that plea. Um, that it was on the advice of counsel, and um, and so she she discussed that in, in her testimony. Um, I I think though that maybe Your Honor, this may help. It may have been the juvenile court's thought, based on Mr. Martinez's conflicting testimony. It is internally inconsistent. It is logically inconsistent. Mr. Mart I'm going to remind the court that Mr. Martin, is, as, as, co as counsel mentioned, he was under an order and the children were under an order to have public place visitation, ostensibly for Mr. Martinez's protection against the children who had pled true to, to assault charges against him. However, Mr. Martinez had enlisted the aid of his mother in, a in an attempt to circumvent that order and have visitation at his mother's house, at the grandmother's house, which is not a public place, had enlisted grandmother to circumvent that order, even though she was not aware that the order existed. So why would a man who was afraid of his children, who needed protection against his own children, attempt to circumvent an order that is ostensibly for his own protection. I think it's internally and logically inconsistent, and that may be what the juvenile court was reacting to. Of course, they didn't say anything about that. No. Yeah. And, and I can that, tell by the chime that I am out of my time. That means you're I, out of time. I thank the court and, and ask you to affirm. Thank, thank you very much. Cite a case which says that a reviewing court should be limited to what transferred at trial. Um, it cannot be used, uh, what wasn't uh, presented cannot be used in defense of the judgment. Um, and um, of course, it can't be used uh, to attack the judgment as well. Uh, the reason for, again, the uh, video was to show the demeanor of Mr. Martinez, and that was based upon a question. I asked, what was the demeanor you showed? In other words, is that as far as you raised your voice? Or, and then he answered, uh, correct, I never raised my voice at the voice. Well, wouldn't it, don't you imagine that that would have been helpful to this court uh, on review to be able to hear what the trial court heard? It may have been, but again, the purpose was, as I stated, and, um, and then we also stated the case that says that it cannot be uh, used in defense of the judgment as well. In regards to the issues, uh, some of the other issues, Jennifer Martinez admitted that Michael Martinez made no verbal threats and that the boys were not harmed. There were, there were two arguments raised, in, uh, raised uh, today and also raised in the brief of Jennifer Martinez that were not specific findings of the trial court. Um, one is that Michael Martinez chased Jennifer Martinez through the Walsh University parking lot, and then the other was that uh, by doing that, he committed child endangering. Uh, these arguments are misplaced uh, for, for these reasons, and I have a number of reasons. 
first of all, he wasn't following Mrs. Uh, Martinez. She went out the left driveway. He went out the right driveway. He thought she was going to the Cinemark, which means that she would have turned left. He would have turned left. But instead, she went straight. He was wondering what was going on. That's why he went into the Walsh parking lot. She even called the chase slow. Uh, Jennifer Martinez estimated that the speed was about 20 miles an hour. Um, Your Honors, that's as fast as you go in a school zone. Mr. Martinez stated that it was about five miles an hour. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Martinez stated that she slowly pulled around the parking lot. She stopped at a stop sign. In fact, she stopped twice, once at a stop sign and once when she got back into the McDonald's lot. Uh, Mr. Martinez never hit her, never uh, came after her, even though she stopped. Um, he, uh, <clears throat> she took a, a U-turn. He basically pulled in and then backed out. He went in a different direction. Um, and and for and uh, the brief uh, Jennifer Martinez's brief indicates that the officers waved her back to them. That is not in the record, Your Honor. The officers basically were there when she pulled back into the Mar uh, in, into the McDonald's parking lot. The <clears throat> the other issue. Your Honor, is, uh, oh, um, he did not hit uh, Mrs. Martinez's vehicle. He did not attempt to run Mrs. Uh, Martinez off the road, did not run her into oncoming traffic. These are the kind of cases that were cited by Jennifer Martinez in her brief where uh, the claim is that, that uh, Michael Martinez used his vehicle as a deadly weapon. Um, the cases that were cited in Jennifer Martinez's brief were extreme cases where actually those people did intend to use the vehicle as a deadly weapon. Mr. Martinez did not. His intent was to... Is that it? All right. Thank you for your uh, presentation. The court will take the matter under advice of the Thank you. Your opinion, send to both sides. Uh, do check the Supreme Court website as we close up the Thank you. Thank you both.